We've been talking about the advantages of using each point of view as a songwriter. We've already talked about third person, we've already talked about first person, and today we're going to talk about the second person point of view, which might be the most difficult point of view, but it also can be the most rewarding. We're going to talk about it right now. Hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of Songwriter Theory. Today, we, of course, are talking about second person point of view. We're going in order from least intimate, most objective to most intimate and least objective. This is the third of four. The most objective, of course, was that third person point of view. And then we had the first person point of view. And then surprisingly, the second person point of view is actually a little bit more intimate than the first person point of view. Uh, and then next week, we will be wrapping up this series with Direct Address, the most intimate of all. But before we dive in, yes, we're talking about lyrics, of course, here, because the point of view is about the lyrics, right? There is not really a point of view when it comes to music. So if you do want to learn more about lyric writing, I have a guide, Six Steps to Writing Great Lyrics. It's just a checklist that you can print out, and then it gives you a breakdown of each of those six steps in much more detail. So if you want that, it will take you all the way from a basic idea, right? A song seed, if you will, all the way to lyrics that you can be really, really proud of. And the reason that I think lyrics usually suffer um, is, is, is a lot of times because we don't spend enough time on those lyrics and we don't really have a good process for it. We just sort of write lyrics until something's good enough and then we call it good to go, which is why I think lyrics overall are generally the most disappointing part of most songs, even songs that you hear on the radio and even outside of pop radio, which of course is semi-notorious for just garbage lyrics. But besides that, um, even with successful artists that, that are relatively praised for lyrics, usually uh, there's, still on the weaker end. So if you feel like you need to level up your lyrics the way we all do, really, that guide is for you. Link in the description below. Let's dive into what we're talking about here. What is a reason that you might want to do second person point of view in your songwriting? The first reason is that it's the most intimate, non-selfish point of view. So the only point of view that's more intimate than this point of view is direct address. But direct address, and we haven't covered it yet, but direct address uses I, and it's I talking to you. So this tends to be very much like the way you would write a letter, right? And we're not going to dive too deep into this because we're going to talk about it next week. But it's sort of like writing a letter in the sense of, of, of it's about me talking to you, right? If you get a breakup letter from somebody, it's all about me and what I need to say to you. So it still has a selfishness to it. And as songwriters, oftentimes we're using songwriting to sort of, you know, talk through our emotions and stuff. And sometimes this is frankly a very selfish process, right? Sometimes I just need to songwrite to deal with my own emotions, deal with my own uh, issues, right? Um, But second person is distinctly quite non-selfish. And the reason for that is... It's it's a point of view that has no I. There's no I in this story. So in third person point of view, you also don't have an I, right? Because I am not in the story. There's just he, she, and they. And then for first person, we, we have I again, right? It's all about I again. It's just there is no you in this story. So I am telling you this story about me and other people, but you are not actually involved in this story. For this second person... It's all about you, and there's really no I in the story. So second person mostly can be defined by a focus on you, the spotlight being on you. When I say you, I mean like the word you, right? Who you is can be vague and generic, and in fact, as we're going to talk about in a little bit, you can even be something that is you talking to yourself, like looking in the mirror, right? Sometimes you address the person in the mirror, if you will, as you. Like, why do you keep messing up? Right. As a, as a way of saying, why do I keep messing up? But beyond that, this is that point of view that's all about you. Right. So people listening to it in the audience and stuff can think that this song is written for them. It's written to them. There's a sort of universality to the word you. Um, and so being the least selfish point of view that is also fairly intimate, I think is a really powerful tool because it can really be 
utilized for songs that have that universal feeling while also having this intimacy to it of like, you know, anybody can relate to being the you in the story, right? Anybody can put themselves in that person's shoes because it's so vague. So in this case, the subject is you, which we haven't had before. Which leads into that second reason. This is the best point of view for making the song all about the listener. right? So if you want the effect of the listener feeling like this song is written for them, this is probably the best point of view for that. right? Because in your third person, again, it's he, she, and maybe they can relate to he and she, he or she. But it's about, you're not saying you, right? And then in the first person, there is no you in the story. It's all about I. It's all about me, right? But this point of view, it's all about you. And again, it's even more about you than direct address, which does have you and I. But the spotlight usually is on I. And it might be about you, but generally because I'm in the story, there's a there's an inherent selfishness to it, right? Like you broke up with me. Oh, what's wrong with you? Right? Like that you're the subject of that sentence, but let's be honest, it's really about me still. So this is a great point of view to make sure that your listener can feel like this song is for them. Perfect point of view for that. Reason number three, I know that was a short reason, but it's important. Great point of view to talk to yourself in the mirror while also making it universal, right? So I alluded to this already. Oftentimes, I don't know how you talk to yourself. I don't know how you think to yourself. But often, I will find myself referring to you, when you is actually me, right? So I don't usually say to myself, oh, I messed that up again. I usually say, you messed that up again to myself. And this point of view is perfect for that, right? Because you is very vague. Who Who is you? Is you, you the listener? Is you the person next to you in the audience that I'm also singing to? Is you me looking at myself in the mirror? And that's what gives it, that real universal feeling, right? It could be an internal monologue, right? It could be an internal monologue where we're saying to ourselves, why can't you get anything right? But really we're talking about, why can't I get anything right? And then there's a certain universality to the word you, as I mentioned before. So it can apply to literally anyone who's listening. And it can even apply to everyone who's listening who still hears or thinks I when they're looking in the mirror, right? Because if, if the whole song is about why do you mess everything up? There's actually two ways that people can relate to that. One is like me talking to you. So it's about you or it's you putting yourself in the position of the singer looking in the mirror saying, why do you mess everything up? Right? Because oftentimes in a song, it's very common for somebody to put themselves either in the singer's shoes, right? Especially if they're singing along with the song, right? And I do this a lot. A lot of songs that I really like, as I'm singing along with them, I'm I'm relating to the singer. I'm putting myself more in the singer's shoes, right? So if there's an I and a you in the song, usually I'm relating to the I in the song. But the other way to listen to a song, of course, is as, as the receiver of a song, right? as the person being sung to, which is technically what's actually happening, right? So you perceive yourself as, as the you in the song, if you will. So because of that, the word you sort of works for in, in, in all ways, right? Because you can be thinking, oh, the singer, the I in this story, is talking to me, the you, and it makes sense, or the you is something that I'm putting myself, I'm, let me rephrase, or I putting myself in the shoes of the singer who is looking at themselves in the mirror saying, you messed this up, right? Looking in the mirror saying, you messed this up. I still can put myself in the position of the singer and still relate to that looking in the mirror concept and saying, you mess everything up, right? So these are the main advantages, at least in my mind, of second person point of view. 
Personally, I think that this point of view is a great, great, great way that you can actually change it up because it's very easy for us to inherently keep going to first person and direct address. Those are probably the two most common. Third person is pretty common too, but there's an inherent naturalness to those because in life, right, whether we're writing a letter, whether we're speaking to someone, it tends to be in those two addresses, right? We live in our own experience. Third person, which sort of gets into this external narrative, right? Like you're outside of the story. It's like, you know, I described it as me telling, explaining to my friends something about the world of the Mandalorian TV show, right? Like I can explain that, but I'm outside of the world, right? I'm sort of this but that, that's not real life, right? In real life, our experiences and stuff are very personal. It's very I, and there may be a you in the story or there may not, right? It might be me telling you a story about me and other people, or it might be me telling you a story or me talking to you directly about us or about something that we both can relate to, which is why I think we tend to gravitate a lot towards that first person and direct address, which I think is totally fine, right? They're two very, very powerful points of view. Really, all four of these are great. They're just great at some different things. And for certain songs, different ones will be better or worse fits. But I'd encourage you to really go out of your way to try to write something in second person, because I think second person generally comes a little less naturally, but it really opens up some options. It really gives that universality, right? It really can give that that feeling of like everybody in the audience is currently relating with each other, right? All being sort of on the same page, feeling like, hey, like, yes, I I am that person. This is my experience, right? This is me. And there's a beauty to that sort of universal experience type thing that we can really play with a lot with second person. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you're on YouTube. Have you used second person? Do you like second person? Are you going to try second person now that we've talked about it? Um, and Hey, if you're listening via podcast, go on iTunes, leave a review and in the comment there, let me know the answer to that question. I just asked, have you used it before? Second person? Are you going to use it? What, what excites you the most about the idea of second person? Is that the universality? Is it the fact that it's the most intimate, non-selfish point of view? What is it that you like the most? If you're on YouTube, also be sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it because I have new videos coming out every single week. Yes, I know this is again on the shorter side. Nobody's told me yet whether you guys like the fact that I'm trying to um, take up less of your time by cutting down the amount of time a podcast is. So let me know. Email me, joseph at songwritertheory.com. Do you like this more short, succinct, get to the point, don't go off on too many tangents type thing? Do you prefer the longer form with the half an hour plus? Let me know what you want. Let me know what's most helpful to you, and I will be happy to accommodate that. Thank you, as always, for joining me. Thank you for taking your some time out of your day in order to think about and learn about songwriting so that you can go implement it this week. Be sure to actually do songwriting this week. Don't watch another video of mine. Don't listen to another podcast before you do some songwriting. You need to eventually actually do things and not just listen and consume content. The point is for you to actually go write songs, so I encourage you to do that. Thank you, as always, for listening or watching and watching, and I will talk to you next time.